What I'd like you to do is take notes while you listen to this tutorial, and that can be in your book or you might have a, um, a docs open uh, where, where you've been writing your notes for Namely prior to that. The purposes of us reading Love and Honour and Pity and Pride and Compassion and Sacrifice by Nam Lee is because it's one of the prescribed texts for, um, for the Craft of Writing module. So in Year 11 we looked at Elsie's House and The Light Between Oceans and a number of other pieces of writing and we looked at them from two perspectives. This is going well. So um, we explored the ideas expressed in the story. For example, in Elsie's house, the character was experiencing significant change in her life. Her house, uh, which was a reflection of her identity, was taken away from her and she was taken to an aged care facility. And secondly, we're going to look at, we looked at the stylistic choices used by the author to bring the story to life. So, for example, um, the use of light in that story, how it was really warm and nurturing in the house and it was artificial and cold in the outside world. So we looked at binary forces and the use of time and evocative imagery, the voice of the narrator and a whole lot of other um, stylistic choices. And essentially what we did was we used these stories to help shape our own writing. And we were able to precisely articulate how we shaped our writing in that case. So what I'm sort of suggesting is that, that um, what we learnt last year is connected to exactly what we're doing now with the craft of writing. So um, that's what we have to do for Nam Lee's story. So in our cow booklet, the yellow one, there's some good information concerning what the story is about, um, Nam Lee's story that is. And it's just before uh, the printed copy of the story in the booklet. And what I want you to do is I want you to have an opinion about the story as a piece of creative writing. So, for example, do you like it? What do you like about the story? Can you appreciate how it was written and how he's written the story? Are the stylistic features well placed? Uh, and can you identify three stylistic features that you can appreciate? You don't have to like them, but you, you know you have to be able to appreciate um, the effect that it has had on the story and how and why he's used them, perhaps, and come up with some sort of opinion about that. And what I need you to remember is this is a fictional account of his life, and truth and fiction are blurred in this story, and we have to sort of come to a point with our opinion, does that matter? Um, because there's a bit of a clash going on there. Um, all right, well, what is the story about is the big question. And before we begin that, I wanted to show you this comic that was in today's paper. I really liked as its comments. Okay, and just have a look at it. And what it's really about is it's highlighting, and the comics, this comic always does that, the different worlds and the different perspectives of the father and the child. Or the parents and the child in the, the whole story. Okay, so um, you know they're they're existing in the same space, but they're on two completely different planets, and they they're viewing the world from from um, different perspectives. So I think that's um, a really nice thing to look at um, in relation to this story, but it's certainly also evident in uh, Henry the Fourth, and that's really the connection that that um, we are trying to make by choosing this text is that it, it does connect well to the, um, the ideas somewhat in Henry IV. And you'll see when we do the Plath and Hughes poetry that, that it, it does um, have uh, connections to that as well. So let's go back to what the story is about. It's about, that's not, I must have missed, I did, <laughs> now I'm moving ahead. So. What it's about, I'll move to the next slide, it's, it should say relationships. The, the story is about relationships and the relationship between the father and the son. And it's difficult for Nan to truly understand his father, the way he behaves, why he was so strict when Nan was a young boy, why he burns the story, all those sort of things. Why is that the case? Well, because Ba's life experience of war in Vietnam is a completely different world to Nan's world. 
and Ba sacrificed everything and he risked everything to protect his family. And Nam cannot understand that because he's a young man and the point he is. So just like uh, good old Jeremy in the Zitz comment, he's got no idea of um, what the, the um, his dad's perspective is. Can't understand it at all. Okay, we're back on track now, the, the conflict slide. The story explores Nam's conflict with his father and it also explores Nam's internal conflict. So this is written by a wiser, older Nam looking back at these events. And I get the feeling that he feels remorse for being so selfish, being concerned more with himself. Uh, but now he, he laments the loss and um, that the, re, the relationship, loss of the relationship that he had with his father. The story deals with time also, and it examines uh, the past and present. And it compares the different worlds. So when you think about it, there is Ba's life in 1970s Vietnam. There's Nam's life as a Nam's life as a child. Um, the time period when Nam's father comes to visit, like which is the present of the story. And finally, there's the real present when Nam wrote the story. And uh, I really like this this line in here. You know, if I had known then what I knew later, I wouldn't have said the things that I did. This is the climactic moment in the story where Nam re resents responding with, remor re uh, with raw emotion to his father's burning of the story. And with hindsight, Nam would have responded differently. But it sort of raises questions that we must ask of ourselves, you know, this is what I'm saying, having an opinion. Um, why did his dad burn the story? And why does Nam feel remorse? What does he know now that he didn't know then? These are all not explained in the story, but we can build that, that into our understanding. And I think that's really important to, to think in that, that manner. Okay, um, finally what the story is about. Well, it's about um, truth and fiction. So where is the crossover between truth and fiction in this story? And does it matter? What is the real purpose of the story? Is it to present Nan's life story, or does it rise above this? And I, I know personally I was totally immersed in the story, thinking it was truth. So it's a clever piece of fictional writing, and, and I think that Nan's voice is, is really, really authentic. You know, and we have to look at that and say, well, <clears throat> what is the, um, the relevance, or is it important? that it's a fictionalised account, that the, the truth has been blurred um, or, <clears throat> or you know, even sacrificed in telling this story. Does that matter? Or do the ideas and the, the, the message that, that he's presenting um, in the story, do, does, is that more important? And do we get more out of it that way? Um, so stylistically, one thing he does is he uses me metafiction as a means of constructing a relationship with us as the reader and that's you know he's telling us along the way um, you know what he's doing in the writing of his story and there's a really nice line as a good example I think oh, which I didn't put in there <laughs> I was in a bit of a rush um, he says maybe he didn't tell it exactly that way maybe I'm filling in the gaps but you're not an, you're not under oath when you write a eulogy and this is close enough so he's, he's um, presenting his own insights within his story. So he's talking about the process of him writing the story. And uh, that's, that's uh, you know, an interesting thing to explore when you read back over the story. One thing you'll need to do uh, is to go and find some nice moments in the story. Some areas where Lee has used imagery, short sentences to affect or other stylistic features, some of the things that we've been talking about before, so that you can discuss this in a reflection. Uh, next time we'll have a look at the types of things that you could be asked to, to, to write um, in relation to this story. Um, and I just thought it would finish with an example of, of um, what I'm trying to get you to look at. And that is, one thing you could say is, uh, you know, as I was reading, I, I noticed... Um, at least appealing to the sense of smell in, in the story. And 
sort of three quarters in through the story. He um in the in the space of uh, you know probably about fifteen or twenty lines, he uses these two two little quotes. So the room smelt like peppermint, and so this is drawing on a memory from the past when when uh, Nam was um, resisting returning home and living with his dad, and then shortly after that, Nam in the present returns home to his apartment, and Dad's been cooking, and he the apartment smelt like fried garlic and sesame oil. So he's using images, oh sorry, imagery to capture moments in time. So I want you to go off and find three uh, different aspects of um, the style in the story that you can draw on and and build into a, a reflection. Um, but it might also be that you will build that into your writing as well. So, but we'll talk about that next time.